Hello and welcome to the Controller Talk podcast presented by Danfoss North America. Our goal is to bring you information about using Danfoss controls in the North American supermarket and warehouse industry. We're doing these twice a month for now. You can catch these podcasts wherever you get your podcast, and they're available through the Danfoss Ref Tools app. For the video version, check us out on the Danfoss North America YouTube page. Search for Controller Talk to see our video collection. I'm Dave Yoder, along with Chris Brown. So Chris, we need to talk about college basketball. Um, University of Maryland doing much better than Penn State, first of all. Okay. Pulled a top 10 upset off this week, but they're still... Nah. Not ranked, are they? Nah. They're not ranked. They won't be. <laughs> <laughs> they're ranked in the Big Ten because you have to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're still higher than Penn State. Yeah. <laughs> yep, they are. UConn is number one. Are they? Yeah, my son's taking grad classes up there so he can... For getting his UConn stuff out. I've been focusing on NFL playoffs. So. NFL playoffs, yeah. You're excited about the Ravens. Yeah. They're not going to lay an egg like the I Cowboys sure and the Eagles, are they? Me down. <laughs> I sure hope they don't. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> you can always watch basketball. Yeah, right. All right. So, Chris, um, let's talk about uh, the CO2 pack controllers. Um, so, we've kind of worked our way through some courses here. We're up to the 401 course. Yeah, this yeah, we're is, getting into it now. Yeah, <laughs> getting into the serious stuff. Yep. So uh, it occurred to me from uh, we were both looking at a, a site last week, actually on in the store with noise. We and, were allowed out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dirt and noise and CO two and compressors and everything. And uh, it occurred to me that there are times when you'll kind of say, "I know what's going on," and you start looking through the menus, and then you quickly think, "I don't know what any of this means." So what we're going to get into are some of the settings that you typically will run into and try to explain a little bit about why those settings are there and what they do. And if you adjust them, you know, why would you want to do that? And um, uh, I think when you start getting a little more um, comfortable with the settings, then uh, things kind of come into place a little better. Yeah. So, um, yeah, some of it looks like alphabet soup at first glance, but um, we'll uh, talk about what they mean. Yeah, just mindset going into it. Don't don't assume you have to change every one of these every time you're looking at a system or starting it up. These are things you know right. what they, they do. And if you're having problems, maybe it's more something you look at. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of these are, um, are by default uh, settings that can get you up and running. And then if you think, I want this to work a little quicker, a little slower, then yeah, you can get into them and make some adjustments. But but yeah, right off the shelf, a lot of these will work. Yep. So the first one I want to talk about is a setting that you can find in there called Easy PI Selection. And um, and a lot of these you can uh, kind of trace back to the idea of a PID control standard. And um, the Easy PI comes from that. It's using the, the proportional and the integral uh, type of settings and applying them to CO2 control. And a lot of it's, um, a lot of it can be on the compressor control side. So they take a collection of four PID settings and they combine them into one setting just to make it easier so that you don't have to necessarily know everything about everything to get started. So the easy PI selection has a range of uh, one to 10 and it defaults to five. So when you turn it on, it's going to have five in there. One is the slowest and 10 is the fastest. So we're talking about, in general, how fast does it react to changes in uh, pressure at the rack? And, uh, of course, we know from looking at the pack controllers that it will look at the pressure, but it does a lot of conversions and displays them in temperature um, because uh, we always are trying to achieve a certain um, suction temperature so that we can get the cases temps that we want but a lot of things are displayed in temperature and the easy pi selection uh, we said it has four different settings within it and we'll talk about those four settings now um, the first one is called kpto where kp is the gain factor associated with the proportional number for how far are we from our set point and uh, KP refers to the, the suction target, and that's, of course, pressure converted to temperature. And the further you are from the set point, the quicker the system will want to respond to correct that. Um, so that one has to do with the uh, proportional, and, and 
KP is kind of a standard way of stating that. And then we have another one here. The second one is called TN, TO. Uh, we know TO represents the suction pressure converted to temperature. And then TN is this time factor that's um, associated with that. So how long have we been away from the suction target? And it, it factors in uh, a time. And um, that will help you if you're, you've been away from the target for a certain amount of time. The longer you're away, then the more it will try to correct that. So that's the kind of an integral uh, portion of the PID uh, setting. And we have two more here. Um, the first one is the plus zone acceleration factor. And that's how fast it's going to respond to pressures that are above the target. And then we display that as a A+. Plus. And then the fourth one that's included in the easy PI selection is the minus zone acceleration factor. And that's how fast we respond to pressures below the target. And we display that as uh, A-. Minus. And we've noticed that um, when it comes to this easy PI selection, of course, it defaults to five. But on some of the smaller transcritical CO2 systems, guys have been telling me that it seems to work pretty good if you set it to seven, which is not the fastest, it's not the slowest, it's somewhere in between, and it just seems to work a little better there. Um, and the last thing we want to point out is that um, you can fine tune those four individual settings. You know, if you think you're comfortable with them and you think, you know, this is good, but I want to fine tune any of those four settings, instead of picking a number from one to 10, you can go with an option called user defined. And then in uh, Service Tool, it'll allow you to go into those four individual settings and tune each number if you really want to. Yeah. And I think something else to keep in mind here with just what you've gone over and what we're going to continue on with. But um, I'm sure at this point, we're a 400 level course. So everybody's done their homework and sure. no Service Tool like the back of their hand. Sure. But when you're in Service Tool, you, you've got the different sections for your suction group, your gas cooler with the high pressure valve, and your receiver with the uh, flash gas bypass valve. We've got the different sections in there for each one of those. A lot of what we're talking about here would be the settings that you see under the suction group category okay. or yeah. section that's related to how we're controlling the compressor specifically. Mm -hmm. yep. You're gonna have separate settings where you can change the reaction time on the compressor staging versus the high pressure valve versus the gas bypass under each one of those sections. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean when we're in the gas cooler section or if we're in the receiver section, we're not necessarily going to see every one of these options that we're talking about here. This is yep. the parts of this, at least that are specific just to how we're controlling the compressors. Yep. Uh, so, but yeah, if we, if we move on, um, filtering, so that's something else we want to look at. We, we may see a need to filter out some of the sensor readings we're getting specifically the suction transducer and the, um, condensing transducer, condenser presser, condensing pressure transducer, or discharge transducer. Uh, so on the suction side, which we would refer to the, the saturated reading of that suction pressure is TO. You're going to see just that, a TO filter it's called. And that, that's what it's looking to accomplish. It's reducing fast changes that, that we might see if the suction pressure is bouncing up and down with, within less than a few seconds. So some frequent um spikes basically we can incorporate this time filter um so that it will smooth out that that suction pressure reading and in turn suction temperature that we're seeing a little better and then the same again on the discharge side pc is our abbreviation for condensing pressure transducer um, there's a pc filter where you can also reduce fast changes in, in that reading um to, to be able to smooth that out some as well you could cause fake trips on the compressors and lock them out things like that or, or what you could see if if we were getting these spikes that we didn't want to necessarily record in the pack controller itself uh there's a, also a setting for initial start time so if we, we're in a situation where uh, we want the first uh, compressor to, to hold for an amount of time we don't want to continue to increase in capacity we can set that initial start time anywhere between 15 300 seconds and again maybe if we're just ramping up too quickly on the initial startup and not necessarily on, on normal running conditions that's something you can address with this initial start time setting 
and then analog outputs for for something like a vfd that we might have on a lead compressor or maybe even if it's a digital compressor you can do some things with the analog output that are going to to that vfd or, or digital compressor to drive it so there's an ao filter um, this will help prevent fast changes to the analog output signal if you need to reduce the response there and then ao max limit so if you wanted to limit the maybe the compressor's oversized and we didn't want to run it at full speed or, or full capacity, then there is an AO max limit where you can limit the analog output signal that you're sending to that compressor with that setting. So is that a, uh, like if you set that AO max limit to 80%, mm -hmm. it'll send, basically tell the drive or whatever you're controlling to stop at 80% rather than going on to 100 eight volts, whatever frequency that would correspond to based on how the drive set up, so okay. whether it's a max of 60, 70 hertz, but yeah, it would, yeah. uh, it would use it in that way. Yep. To limit yep. it to a lower frequency or yeah. Okay. RPM. All right. And there's a couple of uh, settings in here that um, can be used only when there is a problem on the, um, suction pressure transducer, what we would call the PO sensor. Mm -hmm. And, um, the sensors are very reliable, but you can set it to run uh, a certain capacity based on how many compressors you have. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, if you had four compressors and you wanted it to run 75% of capacity, then it would turn on three compressors. Uh, if you had this kind of issue uh, with a suction transducer. So it would, the transducer would have to be outside the pressure range or actually the voltage range. Yep. Um, so that's either below 0.5 volts DC or above 4.5 volts DC. And there is a capacity setting you can put in there called emergency cap day and emergency cap night. Um, so during the daytime, if your transducer goes outside of those voltage ranges, you can put a uh, capacity in there that you want the rack to run at like 75%. Yep. Um, and then, of course, it would still alarm out saying that there's a um, PO sensor error if you have that alarm turned on. But um, then by the same token, you can set a different capacity if it would happen during nighttime hours called emergency cap night. And um, the reason there's two different ones is because for some people, they might um, use a setback at night or night blinds or something like that, that just changes the, uh, the rack capacity. Capacity's way down. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it would be based on, I guess, uh, either a schedule in the system Andrew that's being broadcast down, or you can set that directly in the pack controller. Yep. Um, I'm just looking here now. So, yeah. So the defaults on those would be 50% capacity mm. during the day and 25% at night. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, I, hopefully I didn't just steal your stump Chris question, <laughs> but yeah, I've got a better one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. But that, that's what it would default to just out of the gate is if we lose that suction transducer reading and you've got four equally sized compressors, two of them are going to run. Okay. Um, so that, yeah, that, that's something you can adjust though. Like you were just saying, yep. uh, a couple other safeties that we've got right in the same section again. And this would be, again, looking at the compressors and, and locking them out if we hit some of these safety thresholds. So our, our abbreviations, uh, we get back into those with SD, which is our discharge temp sensor on the outlet of the, the compressor group. So here we can set a, a high limit. And, it, and, and the pack controllers, we ran into this a little bit last week too while we were working on this site. But um, it's not just a, a hard cutoff point where we program in a number there, and if we exceed it, then it's going to turn the compressors off. The pack controller tries to approach it a, a little more wiser, I guess I'll say it that way, um, where we, we will still set a single number in here for this max limit. But as we're approaching it, so about 10 degrees Kelvin below whatever that, that number is that you've entered in for this set point, it's going to start to reduce some of the compressor capacity to try to maybe still allow some of the compressors to run and keep us from hitting that threshold at the same time. Um, so if you've programmed in 284 degrees, whatever 10 Kelvin is below that, we're going to cut out some of the compressor capacity, the gas cooler fans, we're going to force them to 100% if they're not already. And then I think if we continue in that range for every 30 seconds, we'll drop out more capacity. I, th I think it may be a 25% 
jump every 30 seconds until we've cut it all out or we've hit the the number that was entered in but that's one of the things that the pack controller is doing here just from a safety standpoint is high discharge temperature will reduce capacity some and then cut it out completely if we need to and then the same thing with the uh, discharge transducer is we we set a limit there and if we exceed that pressure we would do the same where we're cutting out the compressors taking the gas cooler fans to 100 percent here we start to to make some changes when we get about three degrees kelvin below whatever that threshold is that we've programmed in same deal here we'll start to reduce some of the compressor capacity in 30 second intervals um and then if if you again exceed it completely then it'll cut everything out on the compressor side but if you're seeing high discharge or high limit safeties if you're in service tool looking at it and you're saying well i still got 10 20 degrees to go before i hit my number that i programmed in something's wrong here it's not that something's wrong it's just that it's limited some of your capacity and that's why you're seeing that that alarm and that error message while some of the system is still running um, yeah. And then, yeah, TC max limit is, is a spinoff of PC max limit. It, it's the same algorithm or logic. It's just displaying that condensing pressure limit as a saturated value as a temperature. Gotcha. Yeah. And there are ways of figuring out <laughs> what this 10K and 3K business is all about and what it converts to. Um, you have to do some math to yep. get there, but uh, the 10K works out to be like, 40 or 50 degrees or something, doesn't it, Fahrenheit? Yeah, some of, again, what we've experienced recently, it was, yeah, 3K, 3 Calvin, that was putting you right around there. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. And, um, yeah, if people really want to know, how do I figure out 10K and make it a, either a pressure or temperature or something, they can always email us and we can guide them in the right direction on how to figure that out. Yeah, because it's a it's a differential, not just a raw number. So you, you're really just more or less converting it to Celsius almost, where you're just multiplying it by 1.8 to get the Fahrenheit equivalent. Okay. Of the 10K or 3K, multiply yep. it by 1.8, and that yep. should give you a good idea of where you should be at. Yep. I'm expecting listener mail saying, why can't you just give me the temperature <laughs> in Fahrenheit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's reasons. Yeah. But mm. uh, But yeah, we can help with that. So there's a, a couple of more here. There's a uh, there's a TO min limit. So we know TO would imply that it's the suction pressure converted to temperature, and that's the minimum suction pressure before the compressors are going to turn off. So it's what we used to call low pressure shutdown or something like that. Yep. <laughs> uh, of course, you always have to figure out you know what is our number in the pack controller and where are the um, where the pressure control is set to. And, and there are no time delays on that. That was a question I got in the last week or so was I, I want to delay that some. That's that's not something the pack controller offers. So if that means you need to set it a little lower to combat the fact that you don't have a delay. But yeah, there is no delay associated with that. It's Im immediate. Yep. It's basically saying this is the last resort. If things are still running, we got to turn them off. Yep. Yeah. So another one is TO max alarm. So we're still talking about suction pressure converted to temperature, and that's just saying uh, we want a pressure alarm uh, based on the pressure on the suction side going above that yep. that um, that limit. But you can you have to display it in temperature rather than pressure. Yeah. So you'd have to convert it uh, on your Danfoss Ref Tools app or something like that. Yep. And that uh, one is yeah. just an alarm that oh. won't actively shut anything down. Uh, you've got max pressure settings in the case controllers, and you've got something else in the pack controller. I don't know how much we've gotten into injection, the injection signal. Not a lot. We may have to touch yeah. that in yep. the future here because that's pretty important. But mm -hmm. this one directly in itself, it doesn't change anything with how the rack's being controlled. Okay. Yep. So it doesn't act on anything. It just gives you an alarm. Right. And then the delay for that alarm is called TO max delay. So that, uh, that's that. Yep. That's that part is straightforward. All right. So Chris, let's, um, let's transition over now to, uh, your favorite part, which is stump Chris. And I'll throw a question at you that you know nothing about. Uh, well, you might know the answer, but you may not know what question is coming. And, um, 
since I haven't shared it with you, uh, we'll see what you know about the uh, setting in the case controller that's, or the pack controller that's a little amusing to me, called the I'm Alive Relay. <laughs> which uh, I guess I'm alive is a good thing if you're in a controller, but um, yeah. What, uh, what does that really do in your own words? My view on it is it's, it's something to say the pack controller is functional, that it has power, that it's operating that type of thing. If we had a condensing unit on the receiver or mm -hmm. some other type of backup generators, that type of thing. Um, when we didn't see this signal, that may be something that says, okay, let's kick the condensing mm -hmm. unit into gear to keep the receiver pressure intact. Yep. Yep. So the, um, as a side note, the, the manual for the 782 A and B is pretty good. Yep. You know, especially once you get up to about page 50, that's where you get a lot of meat, uh, uh, of the matter. And if you start reading in there, you'll start to understand a little bit more about some of these settings. But yeah, according to the manual, it's basically saying that, um, if regulation stops, mm -hmm. um, meaning there's some kind of problem here, then it'll open that relay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a way to know that things are functioning. Yep. Yeah. And some people may just use that for an alarm. Some may use it to, to again, activate something. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What the original need for it was, I'm not sure, but there's yep. some different uses of it for sure. Okay. Yeah. That's, it seems like an acceptable answer. I think you left it. It's like, it wasn't a hard cut no. number here. We're doing gray, gray, yeah. room, gray area. Yeah. Yeah. I left wiggle room for you this time. All right. I'm yep. turning over a new leaf and getting some <laughs> answers right here. Then. <laughs> new year, new leaf. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right. Now, as far as listener mail goes, uh, last time we talked about our, uh, we dangled that carrot out there and said that the first person to send us a legit case controller or pack controller type question would win themselves a holiday gift pack <laughs> worth twenty nine ninety five, maybe even more than that. And um, don't you know, the guy that uh, was the first to get in his question, and it was a legit question, um, was a Václav from the Czech Republic. So the guy that would be the hardest to ship something to <laughs> jumped in first, but Hey, that's fair enough. We didn't stipulate 2995 plus shipping and handling, right? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Cost us $70 in shipping, but, uh, yeah, he had a question about, uh, extra compressor capacity that's in the pack controller. So I got to research that one a little bit. Okay. Cause there's a setting in there that, uh, that mentions that and he was looking for more information. So we'll dig that up and get that to him and get him his, his highly valuable gift pack. Part of that I think is, uh, and don't quote me on it. We'll look into it some more, <laughs> like you said, but I think some of that plays into if it's going to cost you energy to, to kind of the, the whole premise on how we control the high pressure valve. A lot of times is to try to give us the most efficient system we can get. But if at times you want to, increase your compressor capacity knowing that it's going to come at an energy penalty maybe middle of the summer your cases are running too warm and you just need it yep i think that's where that comes into play is kind of saying energy savings thanks but no thanks i need as much cooling capacity yeah. as i can get right yeah. now okay good good we just walked all over my next dump chris question so <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to it mm -hmm. but that's okay we get to answer a question uh at the outset here yeah. So that's good. All right. Well, I think next time around, we may talk about service tool and kind of go into a little deeper information on that one and kind of what you can and can't do with it. And yeah. it, it is really pretty, uh, a good thing to have for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I argue it's a must for the startup part of the system for sure. Yep. Yep. And we can talk about ways to um, even use service tool remotely. Mm -hmm. If you're not on site, there's ways to do that remotely, which is super handy. It can be a big help. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Well, if you'd like to drop us an email with a suggestion for topics to cover, a question or comment, you can always email us at ControllerTalkNorthAmerica at DanFoss.com. That's ControllerTalkNorthAmerica at DanFoss.com. Thanks for listening. The new guy, Josh, not here. Raul Garcia, not here. But he's going to work behind the scenes. Um, Maria's here. She's the only one getting this off the ground. Yep. When do you get FaceTime? <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, for Chris Brown, I'm Dave Yoder. Stay cool.